Our next guest hasn't had an easy road since leaving the Celtics for the rival heat in his new book, Chronicles at All. He's the author of From the Outside, My Journey Through Life in the Game I Love, a two-time NBA champion, future Hall of Famer. We welcome Ray Allen to the desk. So good to have you. Thank you for having me. Even it's though you're a fellow Husky, I have to get out of the way for it, this one because yeah. he's all yeah. sorts it's of fired yeah, up to hate. have you. <laughs> I'm not. No, come on now. Come on now. Come on. I'm just going to ask what I need to just ask you and not go news. back too long for that. Yeah. Let's get right to it. You see the book from the outside. How much does that title have to do with your relationship with your former teammates in Boston? Um, not, I would say probably 20%. You know, the one thing that I talk about in the book is I come from a military uh, background, so I've lived, you know, all over the world. So as I've traveled, you know, the different places I've lived, I've always had to find a way to learn to meet the new kids that were in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, make friends with the kids down the street. And you know, one thing that was consistent was basketball. Mm -hmm. So, and then you take the fact that I'm a three-point shooter, it, it played great against each other. So it had, you know, just a small part, but you know, it, it works well for the book. Mm. What is the relationship with you and these players, particularly Rajon Rondo right now? Uh, well, I haven't talked to him. Why not? Um, w when I left, I left and assuming, just like you know, any free agent anywhere in America in any sport, you have the opportunity to move on and, and you know, go to greener pastures, whatever it may be. Um, but when I left, uh, it was clear that the team wasn't doing what they needed to do to bring me, you know, into the next year or so mm -hmm. uh, with their fold. So, you know, writing was on the wall. I signed a new contract. Let me interrupt. They did offer you more money than the Miami Heat now. And you still decided to go to South Beach to join LeBron James, D. Wade, and the crew. Because Boston offered you more money. Because before you say the Miami Heat, it was about my negotiations with the Boston Celtics, which we started throughout that year. We wanted a contract throughout that whole year, and we wanted to make sure the three of us retired together. Mm -hmm. So based on where I was as a player at that time, what my salary was, we knew I was going to take a pay cut. Mm -hmm. So by the time the year came, they had signed everybody else contractually, and then when it came time to me, it was like, this is all we have left for you. But I knew what everybody in my position was making. So based on what I was asking for and what they were willing to pay me, it was like, we can't pay you that. We're not going to pay you that, even though they could have if they wanted to. So now we realize, hey, the relationship seems like it's over. We had the LA Clippers, we had the Miami Heat, Memphis Grizzlies, and the Timberwolves on the table left for me potentially for agent wise. So as we knew that the Boston relationship was over with, we had to figure out between these four teams where I was going to go. Mm -hmm. In that same day, the next day, Jamal Crawford, they actually thought that I was going to use them as leverage, the LA Clippers. So I had to speak with Vinny Del Negro and say, listen, this is real. Like, we have to figure out where we're going to go and what, what's the next chapter for me. They then signed Jamal Crawford. Mm -hmm. So then what was left was Miami, Memphis, and Minnesota. Right. So I had to choose between those three teams, knowing that my tenure was over with in Boston. Max, I'm coming to you with a, in, a, in, a couple of, in a couple of seconds. Let me just ask Ray this. That's business. Yeah. And we get that. Like Isaiah Thomas, if he had a problem with Danny Ainge, because that arguably could have cost him money, et cetera, et cetera. We get that. We don't know KG that well, but we know KG well enough to know how real he is. Yeah. Paul Pierce, class personified. You know Kendrick Perkins, real dude. Rondo for better or worse, seems to be a relatively honest guy. Those are the kind of guys that will look at a business decision like that and not personalize it. But it seems to be that there has been some personal animus that has existed since your departure. And if it were just about what you said, those are not the kind of guys that would have a problem with you for making that decision. It seems to be something else that comes along well, with at it. At what point do you vouch for my, my character? I'm asking. I'm you, asking. Know, you, you look at me and you say all these things that I didn't do and this who I was. Like, I've been good to the media my whole career. Sure. I've done everything that people have asked of me. Yes, you have. When it comes down to that scenario, just like anybody in sports knows, you have a deadline. July 1, when teams come up and they say, hey, we want to bring you in, and then you got July 2nd, 3rd, where you can start signing contracts, you know, the chips are falling. The no, dominoes not, are falling. I'm not questioning any of that. I'm yeah, not questioning no, any but of But what I'm trying to tell you is it gets to a point where, you know, the situation happened with uh, James Posey, 
in uh, 2008, after we won the championship, he signs with New Orleans. And it just happened just like that. Right. He was like, hey, I had this contract. We were at the ESPYs. He was like, I have this contract. I had to sign it right. or else they were going to move in another direction. Yeah, but what I'm saying, Ray, is that everybody knows that you've always been class. Everybody knows that you've always been good people. So it was shocking to us, for example, when Boston played Miami and Doc Rivers was cordial and Paul Pierce was cordial, but... Rondo or KG didn't even want to shake your hand or whatever. What I'm saying is it seemed to be an animus that was aimed in your direction from what you describe as a pure business decision. It didn't seem that way for those guys. How do you explain it? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, the minute I leave, you know, again, we had our issues. You know, there's no question about that, but every team has their issues. We argue, we fight, we fuss. You know, th this person thinks he could do it this way. It's just part of sports, but it's not personal. I didn't take anything personal. You know, yeah, Rondo and I had a blow up in the locker room, but he had a blow up with Doc. He had a blow up with KG. It wasn't personal. It's just part of who we are and what we do. Right. I didn't take it personal. I, I sat there and tried to figure out what we need to do because we had to get to the playoffs and hopefully try to win another championship. Once 2011 came, or 2012, when we we're, or 11, when we we're going into the, the free agency, it was like you take all these things and you mash them up. And it was like, I knew my future was over because this relationship that I had with Rondo, I don't have any issues going forward. It just didn't seem like it would be fixed. Very last R question right? before I get to Max. Very last question. Do you think there was animus because you left? Or was it because you went and you, you joined <laughs> LeBron and D. Wade in Miami, which were the enemy, the nemesis? Well, let, let's put it like this. Who, who are the Boston Celtics rivals? At that time, it was... No. Bad. Oh, period, the Lakers. Oh, right. The Lakers. So who, you can't say that they're the rivals. Like At that time, Ray, you could. That, that's that not rivals. You Ray, you won, you won the title in 2008. LeBron comes there in 2010. They go to the finals, bro. They lose to Dallas, and, and then they get you. You don't have who, to call who it rivals. Who are the Miami Heat rivals? Well, I, I mean, at the time, I thought it was y'all. The New York Knicks. Oh, come on, not at that time. Who are the, like, who did the, you just, did who you the just, Boston Red Sox rivals? Did you just bring up the Knicks with a straight face? Yeah. At that time, that D-Wade that, that and LeBron were in Miami? I'm just, the Knicks have been irrelevant Ray, since the hey, late Stephen 90s. A, I'm just Stephen saying. A, give me, give me, ahead, let me, try a, let me take, take a pass take at this. Ray, they were, I have a couple for you, but let's just start here. They, even if you don't want to define them as traditional rivals, they were the primary threat in the East, yes? Yeah, no, no doubt. Okay, so they're mad about that. You're going to the team that presented the primary threat and maybe were even the balance of power considering your shooting ability. Now you're adding that to a LeBron James team. Do you understand why they'd have hard feelings yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah, of course. And, and okay. like I said, I'll go back to um, when I knew that the relationship was over with. It wasn't, I didn't know where I was going to end up. But when you look at the, 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 the dominoes and how they fall, you have your options in front of you. I'm not going to sabotage myself because people are going to be mad that I go to, to Miami. Sure. I have an right. opportunity to win a, a championship ring. In South Beach. Let me, let me, let me, yeah, I mean, that. once hey, you put the, the cards on, on the table, like, you know, this, this is the best position I have. Once I know that, you know, my tenure in Boston is over, I have to go to where I know I'm going to have the best opportunity okay. to win. Like, what's Ray, wrong with that? Ray, you would do Ray, the same Ray. thing if you left. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. But here's, here's, let me say this. Okay. I would have done the same thing, maybe. Okay? But here's what I'm saying to you. Did you ever pick up the phone once you left and call well, the fellas? I, I will say this. In the midst, just like I told you, when you're, I'm going over Talk about you know, after. My, my contract. Right. I'm talking about as I'm going through it. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my backyard and I'm having conversations with Danny Ainge and, you know, he's relaying what, you know, Doc is saying and we're talking about this whole process and I'm with my agent and I'm talking to my wife and everybody and we're sitting here trying to figure this thing out. Like we're trying to sign a deal back with Austin. Mm. And everything that was coming back to me was like, you know, if you wanna be on board with what we're doing, you need to figure this out and you need to jump on board. Anything you want is not gonna happen the way you want it. So I said, okay. And then I text KG and I said, listen, they're not gonna pay me. He goes, nah, they're gonna pay you, they're gonna take care of you, it's gonna be all right, you're part of the family. I was like, it's not looking like that. And then the next thing you know, I get off the phone with Danny and he had a conversation with Doc and he said, listen, if you wanna be a part of this team, you need to sign this contract. So I said, next thing you know, I got Memphis, Minnesota, and Miami. The rest is history. Ray, in the book, you, you tell me what you would have done. I'm Ray, going to tell the, you in a minute. Go yeah, ahead. In the I, book, I you know. describe. Yeah. Right here, Ray. I ain't going I know nowhere. You got flip flops somewhere. <laughs> you know you want to go to flip flops? <laughs> no problem. In the book, you describe KG as a teammate, as the as the teammate. 
But it seems that Rondo um, is, you know, the real guy at odds here. If Rondo weren't on the team, you said he wasn't passing you the ball at certain points. If Rondo weren't on the team, would you have left Boston, do you think? Well, I'll tell you, um, you one scenario we talk about in the book, um, most people were saying that, you know, speculating on why I left. Yeah. And everybody's like, I was mad that I was coming off the bench. And I was like, I loved Avery. Mm -hmm. Avery was great. Uh, there were moments where we got to the point where I was coming off screens and the ball was going another direction. And I knew what the play was. And we, I sat down with Doc and I was like, listen, you know, I'm trying to make this work. I, I think the ball is going another direction. We need to figure this out. And he goes, yeah, the coaches and I have talked about it. We need to figure something to do. So he said, why don't I just bring you off the bench for Rondo so you could play with Avery, you know, you know middle through the first, the first quarter. And I said, I can, I can handle that, but why don't you just address the issue, the problem, whatever it may be? Like, because I don't have any issue. We just need to figure out what we need to do to win. So, so, Ray, if Rondo wasn't on the team, would you, do you think you would be on, you would have left or no? Like, no Rondo, would you have stayed in Boston, do you think? Again, it, that changes the dynamics. I don't know what would have happened uh, contractually, how they would have felt. But Let's what I will tell break. you, what I will, go ahead, finish the answer. Finish what I will answer. tell you is that when we came into this, when this scenario, I, I said, well, we need to do better at executing after uh, coming out of timeouts, mm -hmm. that, you know, then the half. And I, I went to Doc and I said, what are we going to do? I went to Danny and I asked him to ask Doc. And he said, the ball is going to be where it's going to be. And that's how we're going to go moving forward. And by we'll the way, Molly, I ain't, I ain't flipping on nothing. I'm right here. I got a couple of more questions based He's on what you right? I'll be yeah, right here. Got flip -flops. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> flip flops. So do yeah. you. What I would like to ask you about is Paul Pierce's retirement, Jersey retirement ceremony. You were golfing that day. And in those circumstances, usually the rule of thumb is even if you don't feel unwanted, maybe you show up for the other guy because it's about them. What happened there and how do you feel about it now? Well, I felt extremely bad that I, that I wasn't there. Um, how that happened, uh, it was so interesting because, first of all, I wasn't invited. Um, it was totally outside of the orb. I know everybody was talking about it, and that was what was... That was my only criticism. Yeah. I thought you should have been there. Yeah, and so... You know, so much has been said about or talked about, you know, with what was going on with us and how I wasn't invited here and I wasn't invited there. So at no point did anybody reach out to me and say, you know, we would love for you to be here. I had a scheduled appearance, you know, with a, a Chinese company that I had to be out in L.A. that was scheduled two months in advance. Okay. So I knew nothing, honestly, about, you know, his jersey retirement. So when I was in L.A., it was interesting, I was playing golf with George Lopez and I would have never posted anything because I, I didn't even know that it was happening at the time that it was happening because it was 12 o'clock on, on the West Coast. George Lopez happens to hit a hole in one and I was excited for him and I posted a picture and then I realized while wow, this was happening at the same time that Paul was getting his jersey retired in the garden, I knew nothing of it. Got it. Let me get back to a bigger issue. You talked about the when you were in negotiations in your backyard and you were talking to Ainge and what have you, and you had text KG and KG said, they're going to take care of you. Once it was learned that they wouldn't take care of you, did KG, Paul Pierce, Kendrick Perkins, Rondo, did any of them reach out to you? Did they reach out on the, to the Boston Celtics on your behalf in support of you, to your knowledge? Not that I know of, but in, in, on, on my behalf, once you sign that contract, it's like... Now you have to think about what exactly just happened. You know, each one of us have been put in or thrust into a situation where you sign with another team and you have to say, what exactly does this mean? I'm staying put or I'm moving somewhere else. Now I had to start putting that process in place. So the minute that happened, that's when the vitriol starts. Mm. That's when I have to now deal with the, 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 the backlash. You know, I've had players twittering that, you know, tweeting. I'm a traitor. Yep. Tweeting, yeah, sorry. That I'm a traitor all of a sudden. Who tweeted that? I'm not going to call them out, okay. but I just know who and I remember who it was because I don't, I've learned don't speak on somebody else's business in this game because everybody makes their own decisions for their own reasons. We all have families. That's what I don't understand is like for another player in this league to say, oh, it was wrong that he so, went there. Like, we don't criticize another player because we know what it means to do what we need so to do. So you feel, Ray Allen feels he's been wrong as opposed to you thinking you did them wrong? Say that again. Do you feel that you are, are the one that has been wrong? In terms of the relationship with the players, I'm not talking about the negotiations. I'm not talking about the Celtics. I'm talking about KG, Kendrick Perkins, Paul Pierce, Rondo. You believe you have been wrong as opposed to them feeling like they've been wronged by you? First of all, Kendrick Perkins wasn't even on the team right. when I left. Um, so he's That's not, true. He doesn't, we're talking, <clears throat> yeah. 
Um, I, it's not about right and wrong. You know, we're talking about, you know, signing a contract to go to another team. Like, why is there a right and wrong? I went and won a championship. Why are people telling and me? And beat them to do it. Yeah. Let's but, not forget that you beat your old boys to do it. No, we, we didn't play no, no, in the playoffs. No, no, play play. no, 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 you're right, you're right. It was before the game. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. You, why, why do I have to apologize for doing something I was supposed to do? When we, when we get drafted into this league, they tell us, do you, do you have goals of winning the championship? That's our mission. That's our goal. Wherever we end up, we're fortunate to be with a team that shares the same mindset. The players share the same mindset to want to come out and, and believe in the process every single day. That's been my mission forever. I've done it. I tried it in Milwaukee. I failed. Tried it in Seattle. I failed. One in Boston and then ultimately going to, to Miami. Just to be clear, so they're salty. You're not. I, I never was salty. You, you win a championship yeah. together 2008. That's why I was shocked the day when I, I tried to at least give KG Pound. It wasn't, you know, yeah, I'm, a, I'm against you now. I understand. Like, you know, I'm an enemy to you now. But it's not personal. The only way we can appreciate what it is that we do is by our opposition. We understand our true greatness because the people next to us or across the, the aisle pushes us to be who we need so to be. So how did you feel because KG got Area 21, Max, and he got Area 21, and the crew showed up on TNT? Paul Pierce was there. Rondo was there. Perkins was there. They were all talking about you. How did you feel when you saw that well, segment? Two, two things. I was disappointed that... that Perkins was there. We had a conversation two weeks earlier, and he said he was out of the fray because he knew who I was and where I stood. Big Baby was there. He was talking about me, and Big Baby, I took underneath my wings, and I tried to do everything I can to help him be who, needed, who he needed to be for this league and grow him in this game. So those two players weren't even on the team right. in 2011, so they didn't even, they, they, they didn't even have the right to comment. Mm. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the other two... It's just you're talking about something. I would have I would have much more appreciated if you brought me on the show, and you told me, you know, let, let's clear the air, let's figure this out. KG like, should have invited like, you on yeah, the show. Let's, let's mend the fences instead of being, you know, sitting here talking about why you're mad at me. You know, I'm a brother. KG and I grew up together. Like you're you're over here. Like where you we you forgotten where we the 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 genesis of our relationship. Like, we were kids struggling to make it, mm. to make a life better for our kids and our families. Like, at what point do you just say, you know what, it's, it's just basketball. It's not personal. Like, we Ray, won why championships. Why do you think they're so in their feelings about this as opposed to you? It seems that you're saying, hey, this is a business. I made a decision for my family. There are things bigger than basketball. And it seems as though they are very hurt by it. Why do you think that is? Especially that, KG. That is a question that you have to ask them. But <clears throat> one thing that, that I talk about in my book is uh, that I want people to get from my book is as, as people, we, we've all done great things and, you know, good things and bad things in our life. But what makes us truly great is our ability to pick up from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. we've all, I've all made mistakes. I can admit that. You know, the things that have gone wrong in my life, they've only got me to where I am today. I can tell you what I've done wrong. You know, I can tell you the, the, the shots I've missed, they've made me work harder. So I can admit that, you know, I, I should have, like, really thoroughly engaged those guys as I was going through the process, but it's difficult at the time. All right. Totally understand. But now that you didn't engage those guys, as you eloquently stated, time has passed. We obviously know they have feelings about it. Have you reached out? Do you intend to reach out to them? Do you wish they'll reach out to you? Where are we now? Well, going back to your, your point when you said the three of us, you know, Paul, Kevin, and I, we, we came in this thing together. Um, I felt extremely bad about not having a conversation with Paul at all. I had the opportunity in China to speak with him and say, listen, you know, it was not my intention to not say anything to you. I feel extremely bad about that. I should have ca called you. I should have texted you. I should have alerted you that this was coming down the pipeline. As I was conversating with Kevin by text, I was in a position where I was upset. I was angry because what was going on wasn't going the way I wanted it to go. Um, but at the same time, I, 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 he can't say that I wasn't talking to him and telling him what was going on because he knew as I, I, as I texted him. So now as we sit here, it's like, dude, there's no, there's no ill will. I don't have any angst. You know, these guys I love. These guys, 
Like, you know how many, you ask the kids in Wellesley, Massachusetts, how many times they came to my house during Halloween and how many times they seen Kevin, Big Baby, Big Poppy, Kevin Euclid, Nate Robinson dressed up in a costume over my house and trick-or-treating. Like, we spent time in each other's homes. Like, yeah, we went to each other's events. There's some events we didn't go to, but we all always supported each other. That's why when I'm sitting out listening to these things, like, I'm not a part of the Big Three. I was like, first of all, we're the Big 12 because it took 12 of us. I don't leave anybody out. Eddie House, James Posey, uh, Big Baby, uh, P.J. Brown, Sam Cassell, everybody was important. Scott Pollard, like, it was all of us, and we were all involved, and that's what I wanted people to know. It wasn't just the three of us, and we all shared something special. I know each one of their kids. Every time I see them, I know their wives. So when I talk about them, I always say it in respect to Brandy and to Julie, you know, all the people that we spend time with. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.